Hi everybody and welcome back to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District and we are located in South St. Louis County. Today, I'm here to teach a reading lesson that's geared towards students who are in the third grade, but all learners are more than welcome to join and explore along with us. So let's get started. This week, we are talking all about point of view. So, point of view is the perspective from which a text is written. So this week, it's all about perspective, okay? And when we talk about point of view, right, that perspective from which a text is written, there are two main points of views that we see in text. So the first point of view that we very often see in text is a first person point of view. And that is when the story is told from the view, viewpoint of one of the characters, right? So one of our characters is telling the story in a first person point of view. And so in these stories, there are often some key words that we hear. So let's put those up there. I'm gonna grab some sticky tack to help me get stuck. All right. So when we do first person, right, the main character is telling the story. So it's almost like when we tell our own stories, and maybe you've experienced this when you've written personal narratives in school. When we tell stories, right, we use words like me. And we. So if while you're reading the text, you see words like me, my, I, and we, those words can give you a hint that this text is written in a first person perspective. So a really great example of that is a personal narrative, or sometimes we call them small moment stories, right? Those stories that we tell from our perspective. So I know that I'm writing personal narratives in my class right now. And this week I wrote a personal narrative all about what I saw on a hike I went on. So I used words like I and we and me. So that gives my reader a hint that I'm telling this in first person, right? The main character, me, is telling the story. Now the other main perspective we see is third person. Okay, so third person is when the narrator is not part of the story and that's who's telling the story. So a narrator is someone who's on the outside and they're telling the story about what's happening. And we often hear the word narrator when we think about things like plays, right? So when we talked about dramas a couple weeks ago, we talked about narrators and narrators are the people who outline what is going on in the story. And so when we're in third person, that narrator is not a character who's in our story. So it's outside person. And so in this text, some of the keywords we'll see are they, she, and he. Okay, so those are some of the keywords that we'll see when we see third person stories. Now, third person, we can actually break up into three different categories based on what our narrator knows. So the first category we have is the third person limited point of view. And so in this third person limited point of view, the narrator shares the thoughts and feelings of just one character. So they might know what the main character is thinking and feeling, but some of those other sub characters or secondary characters, they don't know what they're thinking or feeling, right? So he's limited in the amount of um, people that he knows the thoughts and feelings of, right? So if I'm limited in something, I don't know all of it, right? So that's third person limited. 
We also have third person omniscient, okay? And so with third person omniscient, the narrator shares the thoughts and feelings of all characters, right? So it doesn't matter if you're the main character or some of the secondary characters, we know their thoughts and feelings, okay? So that is third person omniscient. And lastly, we have third person objective, and that's when the narrator shares only facts, okay? So this is kind of a little breakdown of our third person, and it takes into perspective what the narrator knows. So do they know the thoughts and feelings of everyone? Do they know the thoughts and feelings of just one character, or do they just know the facts, okay? When we talk about first person, there's just one first person point of view. We don't break that down, okay? So those are the main points of views that we are going to be talking about this week. Now there's also a second person point of view where we see the word you being used, but we're not going to focus on that one this week. So today I wanna to focus on first person and third person and being able to tell the difference between those two when we're reading a text. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you some key little, bleh. I'm going to read some passages and you're going to look for the key phrases. I got a little tangled up there in my words, didn't I? So I'm gonna read little passages. I'll read each passage twice. So that way you have the opportunity to read it and to think about it. Your job is to tell me, is it first person or third person and why? Now that why is key. Whenever we give an answer, it's always really important that we're able to back up our answer with a reason why, right? That we're able to give evidence as to what we see. And evidence when we're talking about reading is often words or phrases that we find in the text, right? So we'll be looking for these key words. So let's review those really fast. With first person, when it's told from the viewpoint of one of the characters, we see words like me, my, I, and we. When it's third person and we're talking about the narrator, right, and he's not a part of the story, we see words like they, she, and he. Right? This is someone on the outside who's talking about that story. Okay, So you're going to be looking for those key words in the passage that we're reading today. And we're going to read a couple different passages. All right, are you ready? Let's put our brains to work. Here's our first, it's the first little passage. It's only a sentence, okay? We'll start small. Anna loved her new cat, Josie, so much that she wanted to take her to school. I'll read it again. Anna loved her new cat, Josie, so much that she wanted to take her to school. Do you think that that's a first person point of view or a third person point of view? Hmm. So I'm hearing a lot of people say that it's a third person point of view. What makes this third person. Very good. We saw words like her, she, right? We saw her again. So those tell us that it's third person. Now you'll notice her is not one of our key words, right? Not all of the key words that we're going to see are up here. There's others like her that we didn't list. So be aware that there are some other key words I haven't noticed. So good paying attention to that, boys and girls. All right, are you ready for the next sentence? Joey and his brother go to the soccer field every weekend to practice scoring goals because they enjoy playing together. I'll read it again. Joey and his brother go to the soccer field every weekend to practice scoring goals because they enjoy playing together. 
Hmm. What do you think? hearing third person again. But remember, whenever we say something, we have to always give a reason why for our answer. So why is this third person? Very good, because we use that word they, right? So we're talking about Joey and his brother, right? Very good, you guys noticed some of those key words. Let's do another one. My grandma Betty moved to Hawaii. She says that she will visit us every year. Hmm. Now this one's a tricky one. What do you think? My grandma Betty moved to Hawaii. She says that she will visit us every year. Is this first person or third person? I'm hearing some people say first and I'm hearing others say third. Let's look at this sentence one more time. My grandma Betty moved to Hawaii. She says that she will visit us every year. So some words that I'm seeing that show me first person are my and us, right? That includes me. But I'm also seeing the word she. And she tells me third person. Huh. Kind of tricky, huh? Yeah. So this sentence is written in first person, right? So just because some key words tell us that it should be third or first doesn't mean that I don't see some of those cross over into the other category like we're seeing here. So in this sentence, I'm talking about my grandma Betty, right? So I can use the word she to refer to my grandma Betty, but by using that keyword my for my grandma Betty, right? And to visit us, us includes me, that tells me that this is first person. So you have to be kind of careful when you read sentences because some of them, they try to trick you just like this. All right, let's do another one. Every year we go on vacation to Florida, but this year we are going to California. Every year we go on vacation to Florida, but this year we are going to California. Hmm, is that a first person sentence or a third person sentence? Hmm. I'm hearing people say first person. How do you know it's first person? That's right, we use that word we, right? So when I talk and say the word we, I'm including myself in that sentence, right? We go to the store. That also means that I'm going, right? That main character is including themselves in that statement. Very good. She looked in the pantry and found a piece of chocolate from last night. But when she bit into the chocolate, she realized it was super old. Ew, have you ever done that? Bitten into chocolate and realized it was kind of old and gross. I know I have. Yeah, let's read that sentence one more time. Remember, we're looking for those keywords. She looked in the pantry and found a piece of chocolate from last night. When she bit into the chocolate, she realized it was super old. Is that first person or third person? Very good. That's third person, right? We're using words like she, right? Not the main character. We're talking about someone else. So there's a narrator talking about this person who's, who ate that chocolate. Very good. I love going to the park and hiking on a new trail. On my last hike, I saw a coyote. 
I'll read it one more time. I love going to the park and hiking on a new trail. On my last hike, I saw a coyote. Hmm. Is this sentence told in first person or in third person? Hmm. You're right, it's told in first person, right? We see that he word there, I, right? I'm talking about myself and what I did. I went on the hike. I is that main character. I'm that person who went on the hike. Very good. All right, so we've talked about this now. I wanna go in a little bit deeper onto some more of this third person, right? So when we talked about third person, here, let's get rid of this and put this up. Cause you guys did really good at identifying these. So I wanna really put you to the test and see if you can help me identify and really get in there deep about third person. So we're going to talk about third person omniscient and third person limited. We're not going to talk about third person objective. But I did want to let you know that that is one of the categories. So we can take these keywords away. So third person is, let's hold that up, when the narrator is not part of the story, right? So when we talk about third person, there are two of the main categories that we see. And that's third person omniscient, which is when the narrator shares the thoughts and feelings of all characters, right? Keyword there is all. And then there's third person limited, when the narrator shares the thoughts and feelings of one character. So the easiest way for me to remember the difference between omniscient and limited is when I think about that keyword limited, right? When you have a limit on something, that means that you have to stop at a certain point, right? When we talk about a speed limit, this, if the speed limit is 35, 35 is the limit. I shouldn't be going past 35, right? So limit means that I can go so far and then I stop. So when my point of view is limited, I only know so much and I don't know any more. So in this case, I only know the thoughts and feelings of that one character. I am only, I'm limited to them. Whereas when I'm talking about omniscient, I get to know about all of the characters and their thoughts and feelings. So for me, that keyword limit, that's what really helps me. So we are going, so let's talk about these two. Okay, so in these two, our keywords are still the same, right? So we see words like he and she, so, we see both of those, all right? So keywords isn't gonna help us when we talk about the difference between omniscient and limited, all right? And so this week, our focus is going to be on third person because a lot of stories that we read are written in third person point of view. So we're gonna focus on that this week. So we're gonna be looking at the difference between omniscient and limited. All right, so let's talk about this first sentence. Are you ready? Okay. For one thing, she mumbles in her sleep. Like she must be nervous or something. She woke up yelling, saying that a dog was running after her, and then she ran out of the room. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it's third person, right? We're seeing some of those key words. It's 
So, I'm missing or limited? What are you thinking? This one's pretty tricky, isn't it? Let's see. So we saw that we have our character, right? She and doesn't give us her names, but it's telling us, right? About her dream. So, hmm. We might need a little inf more information to help us right now. So far, we're a little stuck, right? We don't have enough information really to tell us. Let's see if we can keep on reading. Okay, the next day we went to grandma's house. We had not seen her in over a year. There was nothing like our grandma's love. My sister sat in the back and was quiet, looking out the wonder, looking out the window, wondering if grandma would be happy to see her too. Hmm. What do you think? Does that help us anymore? So now we've got these two characters, right? We've got a boy and a girl. Do we know about both of their thoughts and feelings? We do, right? We're able to see the thoughts and feelings about both of them. So that lets us know that now we're talking about omniscient, right? So we're knowing the backgrounds and thoughts and feelings of both. So a key thing that we're realizing here is that you can't just pick one sentence, read it, and know the answer, right? Immediately, I could tell that that was written in third person. But I couldn't tell the difference between the two. I had to keep reading to keep understanding, okay? So, it's really important that when you read a book and you're trying to identify if it's, um, when we're talking about third person, to talk about the difference between omniscient and limited, that we read a couple pages or maybe a paragraph or two to help us really identify. Right, we saw before when we read one of our sentences, um, my grandma Betty moved to Hawaii and she says that she will visit us every year. Mm -hmm. We saw in that sentence, right, that there are, we saw a little bit of our third person and a little bit of our first person. So some sentences try and trick us. So it's really important that we keep reading, all right? Now, if we only have one sentence, like in our, um, grandma Betty sentence, then we have to really problem solve and think about this sentence. But if we have more to our text, the more that we're able to read, the more that we're really going to be able to identify that point of view. Okay. So to review this week, we are talking all about point of view, right? The perspective from which a text is written. Okay, so that is going to be our focus for this week, talking about point of view. Now, we've talked now about two different points of view that we often see text written in. The first is first person, when the story is told from the viewpoint of one of the characters, right? So we're talking about when the main character is telling the story. And some of the keywords we see in first person are I and we, us, right? So those are some of the keywords that help us to identify when a story is being told from a first person point of view. Okay. The other point of view that we talked about this week is third person. That's when the narrator is not part of the story. Now, since today is Monday, we got an introduction to point of view. For the rest of the week, we're going to focus on third person point of view. So our next three lessons are gonna all have to do with third person point of view, right? When that narrator is not a part of the story. And so some of the key words that help us to identify third person point of view are he, she, they, 
right? Those are some key words that help us to identify if something's being told in a third person point of view. We're talking about other people. And so when we talk about this, we have our narrator. So our narrator, right, can look a little different. That's where our omniscient and limited viewpoints come into play. So when it's third person omniscient, that's when the narrator shares the thoughts and feelings of all of the characters involved, okay? When it's third person limited, that's when the narrator shares the thoughts and feelings of only one character, right? So that word limit is our key word there that helps us to know that difference, all right? So later on this week, we are going to be reading some stories. And as we read those stories, we're gonna be talking about the books, we're gonna be exploring the characters in the books, and we're also going to be exploring the point of view from which the story is told. Because point of view is so important. Now I know lots of you are very familiar with fairy tales, and this week we're going to be exploring fairy tales and the points of view from which fairy tales are told. All right, so I want you to keep that in mind and think about that. So before you join us back tomorrow, be thinking about some of the fairy tales that you've read and what do you know about those common fairy tales? Stories like The Three Little Pigs and um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Be thinking about some of those stories and how those stories went because that information is gonna be very key to what we're talking about for the rest of the week. All right, boys and girls, so I hope that today was a really great introduction into point of view, and I hope that you'll join us back for the rest of the week as we continue to dive in deeper. But until we see you next time, I hope that you guys have a really great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.